Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today for our customer training session on Access World News Research Collection and America's News. My name is Katherine Bergerson. I am the Vice President of Marketing here at NewsBank. I'll be joined today by my colleague, Kim Saunders. Just to let you know, the session is recorded and we will send out a copy of the session um, in the near future. So right now is the perfect time to be taking a look at how you are using Access World News and your America's News resources. In today's digital world, we know that online resources and access to those resources has never been more critical. And with NewsBank, you can feel confident that you are bringing the most credible, vetted news sources to your patrons, whether they're utilizing them in the library or remotely. So today in our session, we would like to share with you an overview of the Rich Collection, what it includes and what really makes it unique. We'll show you how to pinpoint the information that's most relevant to your search needs. We'll share some ideas about how to build visibility and to connect with the patrons in your community. We do have time for questions throughout the presentation. You may see on the left side of your screen, there are some icons. Um, if you click on the chat icon, it'll open up there, type your questions in, we will do our best to get to all of them. If we don't get to yours during the session, we will follow up with you soon after today. So if that sounds good to everyone, we'll dive right in, starting quickly with a bit of background on NewsBank. We are a leading news and information provider to libraries around the world, academic institutions, and more. And I'm proud to share with you that we recently celebrated our 50th anniversary as a company. We aggregate sources, again, from around the world, bringing you and your communities that credible, vetted, information that they can trust. And they're all available 24 hours a day, seven days a week from any device. So let's take a walk through Access World News and America's News. I would like to introduce Kim Saunders. She is a Senior Customer Engagement Representative. Hey, Kim. Hi, Catherine. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Today, like Catherine said, we're going to take a look at Access World News and America's News. Now, a little bit of background, Access World News contains about 13,000 sources globally from more than 200 countries, and it offers content in more than 19 languages. America's News is the American cousin to Access World News. It's US content only, but it includes 40 of the 50 top sources in the United States, as well as a ton of local, regional, and national content. In fact, I live in a small town in North Georgia, and it even includes our tiny little paper. So there's a lot to be had in America's news. So as we're going through today, I'm going to be taking a look and showing you some of the time-saving and more marketable bells and whistles in the resources that you can then turn around and share with your patrons and with your staff. So with that, I'm gonna go off camera, and I am going to share my screen so that we can take a look at these wonderful resources. All right, so hopefully everybody can see my screen. We're gonna jump right in. Um, the first thing to note, um, you'll see I'm using a staff account here. Access World News and America's News operate on the exact same interface. So the functionality is exactly the same no matter what edition or what version of this product you have. So depending on what you subscribe to, the actual content may look a little bit different. And if there's anything that you see here today that interests you or that you're wondering about, you can definitely reach out to your sales rep after the session. So that said, we're gonna pop in first to this very top line. This is our landing page here. And at the very top, you will see the source list. Now this can be extremely helpful. So for you, like as you're on the desk, or fielding phone calls, things like that. This is a quick place that you can go to sort all of the content that you have. So as soon as it decides it wants to pop up, there we go. So the source list automatically, it'll tell you how many sources you have right here, and it automatically sorts in A to Z order. So there's a few things you can do here. So for example, if I were to call your library and said, hey, do you have um, USA Today? the national paper USA Today, you could say, well, let me let me have a look. So there's a few ways you can do this. There's all keywords here. 
You can search by source name, location if you want, format. We'll get into some of these other things later, but for our purposes, looking for USA Today, I'm gonna go by source name and I'm just gonna start to type. Obviously, if looked for it before, it was auto-populating. So when I click in USA Today, there's two pages and we know it's in alphabetical order. I can go to page two and sure enough, there's USA Today there, there, and there. Why are there three versions of USA Today, you might ask? Um, so basically what this will do is it will tell you exactly what this is. So this is USA Today from 1987 to present day. It's a newspaper. So there's a lot of different source types in here. We're gonna get to that. And this is the full text edition. Moving down, this one is an image edition. So this will include full color images, PDFs. This here says web only source. The online edition of the paper and the print edition of, edition of the paper are roughly, there's like a 30 to 35% difference in content because the web edition is often written for SEO, search engine optimization. It's written so that people can crop those things to the top when they're searching for things online. It also gives license to the journalist to maybe include some more information in the online edition. A lot of times they're not limited to the printed page, so those articles can be a little bit longer. So you definitely want to be able to search all of the different versions of the paper, and Newsbank does a remarkable job collecting all of that so that you have everything. So if someone comes in and says, I saw this article, as long as it falls in these date ranges, you're going to get it. So when you click these in the source list, you can then go ahead and search within the selections that you've made, um, or you can open each one individually. Going back to format, we're gonna unclick these and go right back out where we were. Oh, I'm gonna hit the back button here and go back to source list. The format, we talked about image, we talked about text, we talked about um, web only editions. There are some other format or uh, source types in here. There are transcripts. There are some audio files, some video files. There are magazines. There is even some journal content, some blogs. So when you go through the source list, you can see exactly what type of source you're working with because news, as we all know now, is no longer just in a newspaper. It kind of runs the gamut over many, many different um, types of vehicles to get to you. So that is source list. So moving on, we're gonna go back out to our landing page. There's a folder feature here. And I would suggest that everybody here today go ahead and create a personal folder. It's not so that we can spam you, we don't do that. Um, but this is a storage mechanism within NewsBank. So you set up a folder and that way if you do a search or you find some articles and you wanna put them somewhere for a later, um, or say you're helping somebody out and you have to walk away and then come back, but you're afraid somebody might get on your computer and go to something else, you don't lose your work. So you create a personal folder and you can save things to that folder. Again, it's a news bank, like within news bank storage mechanism. Suggested topics are the next thing we're gonna talk about. We're gonna scroll down here. So when you go down here, you can see these tiles of suggested topics. And they kind of are a little bit of everything here. And the reason that this is the way it is, is because you as librarians and us working for NewsBank, we know that you can use news content to do a lot of different things. But it is sort of challenging sometimes to communicate that to the general public. So this way, our editorial team and our product development team have taken articles and then they've grouped them for people for easy access into different areas. So everything like this trending now, this is your true current events. So when you open that, you can see what's going on in the news right now. Um, I like to call it like the water cooler tab. So you can go in here and find different topics in here. And then once you click on them, you know, you get articles. And we're gonna look at that in a moment. There's also, you know, these different tiles will change. If you're in the summer, summer reading will pop up. If there's um, a lot going on um, with politics or elections, you'll see elections pop up. There's business, a little bit of everything here. I would encourage everybody to kind of pop into each of these and take a look. My favorite is health because health information, we all learned with COVID, it changes constantly. And while medical journals are fantastic and you do need them, 
news content is an excellent kind of partner to the medical journals because it's up to the minute, it's up to date. So for example, if you are taking care of maybe an aging parent with dementia, you could go in here, search for that condition, click on it, and you'll see, you know, articles pop up right away as current as that day. So you'll get the articles, and the nice thing is, unlike a medical journal, a journalist has gone in and done the research for you. They've talked to patients, they've talked to families, they've talked to doctors, research specialists, and then they take that information and then they spit it out to us in a way that we can understand as readers. So that's just a little note about suggested topics, my favorite, health. But when you get in here into any of these topics, you'll see these Boolean operators pop up here. You can then manipulate the search results any way you like. We're going to go into that in a moment. But in any case, I, again, encourage everybody to go ahead and pop into some of these topic areas. I think you'll be really, really pleasantly surprised with what you find. Back on the landing page, you know, I'll take a breath. There are some other ways that you can search. You can, um, we're gonna talk about the search box in a moment. There's a date search option and a map search option. And more search options is an advanced search. So if you have somebody that is a really good researcher or maybe yourself and you want to narrow down information and do a really specific search up front, you can do that. These operators appear, um, operator boxes appear here, but you can add as many as you like. A map will appear on this page or you can click right into the map page. Again, with my account, I have global content. So it starts out with continents and then you can drill down into countries into states, into areas to see what sources are there. Back out here, down the right hand side. Now your landing page may look different again, but these blue boxes are your custom shortcuts. So you can work with your sales team, with your customer engagement specialist, whether it be myself or one of my team members or customer service to get these customized for your library. If you have, whoops, did not mean to click that. If you have um, modules from NewsBank, like Heritage Hub, Black Life in America, or Hispanic Life in America, those will automatically pop to the top. And then down there below, you can customize by title. So if there are certain titles in your area that you know patrons are very interested in, let us know. We can put shortcuts out here. A word of caution, you don't want to put too many, three or four max, because otherwise it gets very visually noisy. But just remember that these, this is your area to sort of make NewsBank your own. Okay, so we're gonna go on back. Remember I promised that we would talk about this search box. So this is like a vetted Google. I know that seems like a stretch, but I promise you it is. The reason is because news is so crazy, any topic is safe to search. There is a journalist somewhere in 13,000 sources that wrote about whatever it is you might be looking for, I promise. And I encourage everybody to test it out. The search box is here because we, user testing has told us that about 50% of users will come to the landing page and they'll just start typing in this box. Um, it's just human behavior. We all are familiar with Amazon. So we, you know, we like to fill our card at Amazon. They like to fill this box on NewsBank. So, same kind of a thing you can type right in here but keep in mind and remember to be talking to your patrons and your staff about the same things that work when you're doing you know hard research um, work here so you're going to want to maybe inform them about wild cards and quotations and things like that so in the spirit of fun and because i promise you you can find any topic in newsbank and we don't want to do anything dull today, we are going to search for something that is trending in my area in North Georgia, goat yoga. You can all giggle now if you want. So when you search for goat yoga, it's not a time sensitive topic. So over here, I can go to best match and then it will pull articles about goat yoga. Well, lucky me, there are 9,410 results about goat yoga, which I absolutely find hilarious. So if you kind of scroll down, over here, you're gonna see options to narrow your search. So we've already done, there's best match, newest and oldest. There's a date selector. This slider bar is new. What it tells us immediately is a trend. So it starts in 2010. There was not an article about goat yoga prior to 2010. You can kind of track the trend here. 
But you can see when it really spiked in 2019, goat yoga got very popular and it went down again. Whoops, then it went back up again. So this is kind of a fun little tool and you can slide it around to make that search your own and narrow by date. You can also type in dates if you have them and there's a lot of different formats you can use. So that's nice for patrons if they you know, want to type in a certain date. Source type, we talked about this earlier. So perhaps you only want to look at newspaper articles. So you click that and you've automatically narrowed your search. We've gone from 9,000 down to 7,000. Over here as well, you can, the year search, we really like people to do things by year, but that trending information that we were talking about before, it shows up over here as well. So you can take a look exactly when the topic spiked and do some trending. This is great with you know medical issues, political issues, names in the news, things like that. Source location is exactly what you think. It starts out big and then you drill down and you just keep going. So if I go into North America, I could go into um, the United States, go into a specific state and just keep going from there. Um, oops, I have lost it. Let's go back, there we go. So there's USA, and then we click in, we'll see all the states, right there. So if you just wanted a particular state, this is where you would go, or if you wanted a few different states, you could click several at a time, right? So we already talked, I'm in Georgia, this is a new thing for us here. So if I wanted to just look at what was going on in Georgia, I could look at these 124 articles in Georgia, apply and it would only be searching Georgia. And that's a much more manageable set than 9,000 articles. So that's narrowing down. There's also, when you get to these articles, there's lots of ways to share what you find. So say that you have a friend and you guys are gonna start your own goat yoga studio and you wanna find out, you know, research the topic, figure out how you can market it, what's going on, what other people are doing with it. That's great. So you want to email some articles. You've gone in here, done the hard part, and you want to share some articles. Or maybe you have a patron who's researching a particular topic, and they want to email you to email them what you're finding so that they know if they're on the right track. You can batch email right from here. So see these little boxes? You can click a few articles, and then you can hit this email button over here, and it will say, okay, I'll send those emails for you. Who does it go to? then you need your email address. You can say, well, hey there, here are our articles about goat yoga, take a look. Even if they don't subscribe or don't have a library card at your library, they can still see the articles when they come to their inbox. This is a great way for you to do some guerrilla marketing because when you send it to them, you can say, oh, hey, if we're on the right track, make sure that you get your library card, make sure that you check out our website, make sure you check out this resource, however you want to word it, to gently nudge them in to then do more searching on their own. A little guerrilla tactic, but it works really, really well. So that's your email option. There's a couple other things you can do here. Remember we talked about the folder? So now that we've narrowed our search down, you can see down here in the breadcrumb trail what we've done. We've gone into newspapers only, North America, USA, Georgia, if this is a search that we love and we want to save that search, remember I talked about getting called away from the desk? You can save the search. The next time you come into Newsbank, you log into your folder, the search parameters will be saved for you. You click on it, it'll be updated to that day's results set. So if there are anything new had been added since the last time you did it, they'll crop up for you. But there you can go to save search. The other really cool thing that if you do is set up an alert. Patrons love this. Because once they do all the hard work, if they're doing a project that's going forward, maybe they're a small business owner that's trying to track what's going on with the competition. Maybe they're a politician tracking a specific issue in town or something about the elections, or they just want to see their name in the paper. You can create an alert for just about anything. And when you hit this alert bell, it's gonna ask you who you want it to go to and how often. So if you want it to go once a week, you pick the day of the week. So you know every Monday, the people on this email list are going to get any article that matches your search parameters. If there was nothing, nothing will come. If there's something new, that will come. It only goes forward, not backward. But this is a great thing to have at your fingertips. You can share it with each other. You can share it with patrons. If you're, you know, like I said, coworkers, if you're working on a group project, great tool. 
even family members. Um, definitely, I, again, I know I'm telling everybody they have homework. Um, I would encourage everybody to set up an alert for yourself. That way you can see exactly what your patients will see when they set up alerts. But don't forget this tool is there because it's super fun. Okay, moving along, we're gonna open an article. So let's, this one looks fine. We'll open this up. So when you open an article from here, this is kind of what it looks like. This is a full text version here. We're gonna get to image editions later for any that have those. Um, so our search terms, you can see, are highlighted. Boy, they're really talking a lot about goat yoga in here. They must really like goat yoga. But there's a toolbox across the top that's gonna help you. So a couple things. We're mobile responsive. This will help make your text bigger, smaller. So if you're on a tablet or a phone, Good thing to know, especially for patrons of a certain age, maybe like myself, that need her readers. This next one, my favorite toy. So this will either make you angry or really, really excited. It's a citation tool. So if you were a person that ever had to do citations on a typewriter, you are going to flip when you see this because what happens is it will integrate citation information with any of these services, as long as you have an account, or in my case, I have um, two kids who, one is college bound next year and one's already at school. They did a lot of AP classes. And in those AP classes, they had to write a lot of papers and their teacher wanted their citations in the body of the paper always. So that's a big nightmare, right? You're cruising along writing your paper and you have to stop, put a citation in, not anymore. All you have to do is hit what type of citation your teacher would like or professor. And do you see this box appears? it will populate it for you. Then you take your handy mouse, scroll over, right click copy, and you can paste it right into your document. And then cruise along, you haven't lost any creative juice flowing because you didn't have to take time to type all this out individually and make sure you did it right, by the way. This citation tool is one of the most marketable things. I know that kids aren't on Facebook a lot of the time, but their parents sure are. And if they're like me, they have heard their teenagers complain about how difficult it is, their homework is so hard, yada, yada. Do a little Facebook post and tell them, speak to these parents. Hey parents, do you want something that will blow your mind? Take a look at this, you can help your kid do their work. It's cool for white papers too, for business users. And it's a cool thing to point out to patrons because if they're a certain age, they didn't grow up with the internet or databases, um, they won't know this exists, so definitely let them know. Okay, soapbox over on citations, this is email. Um, if you want to just email that particular article, we've talked about it, print, self-explanatory. Download is important to talk about because we now integrate with Google Drive. You can download something as a PDF to a flash drive or your computer, but if you've got a Google Drive account, this is awesome because there's a lot of collaboration going on now and a lot of people are still working remotely. This is a great place to go put things and then share that Google Drive because usually people are pulling from a lot of different resources at once, so Google Drive. There's our folder again, we know what to do with that. This paperclip link is if you wanna share something on social media or you wanna share something maybe on your LinkedIn page, you want to maybe just um, have a link that you pop into an email, you don't wanna use the email feature. This will then allow the person to open it as an open URL and see the article. If you are going to use it on social media, you'll wanna convert this to a bit.ly or a tiny URL and if you need support in that way, you let us know. And this is a note about Google Classroom. We do integrate with Google Classroom. If you need more information on that, we can get that to you. And then finally, cruising down here, you will see that we have a text-to-speech reader. So this is great for your English as a Second Language patrons, your patrons with visual disability um, or visually impaired, visual impairments, um, people that just don't feel like reading that day, they want it read to them. This is a great thing. So give it a try yourself so you know what it sounds like and then you'll know how to help people but a really cool tool. So that takes us all the way back. We're gonna go back out to our landing page. We are almost done. We're in the home stretch, everybody. You're being so good. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at um, image contents. We talked about this a little, and the reason I'm gonna do this is because it looks a little different. There's still a toolbar, still super easy, but I'm gonna give you just kind of a little uh, view of what it will look like. So we're gonna open this Columbus Dispatch Collection. When we do, if you have a collection title and you have a shortcut to it, it will come up like this. Remember we talked about the format? It comes up over here and it will tell you exactly what you're looking at. So this one has the full text going back to 85, 
the images to 2017, blogs, we all remember blogs got super trendy there, but they're in there. Um, and then the web edition, which we've already discussed. So if you want to just look at the image edition or a patron does, you just direct them to that image edition, click it open, and we're going to take a look. Apologize for my slow browser. All right, so once you get in, you can pick a date. You can pick any date you want up to the current day's paper. Um, I'm going to pick St. Patrick's Day because that seems lucky um, for no particular reason other than it just, again, feels lucky. So here we go. So when you're in an image edition, it looks a bit like this. You get the pictures, the articles, the ads, everything's in there. It's just like reading the paper. There's a little button here that you can hide this ribbon to make it a little bigger for yourself. These over here will zoom in, zoom out, or give you the full page. Across the top, you'll see those same toolboxes here. Um, we're gonna talk about the scissors, which are my favorite in a minute. The rest are pretty much the same. Just keep in mind when you do citations, printing, and download, you're gonna have um, it cite the entire page like a PDF. And on the others, it will, whoops, I went right back out. On the others, it will give you the option to cut out an article or do the whole page. So if you're gonna download, it'll say, do you wanna download the full page or select a clip? If you select a clip, you're gonna get a scissor tool here and you can choose what you want. There's also a really fun time saver in this. A lot of times people want the paper, but they don't you know, want to read the whole paper. They just want a particular section. I've got a bunch of sports fans in my house, so I swear they don't read anything but the sports section. But in a lot of cases with public libraries, what we found, there's a lot of people out there that love the crosswords, right? And so sometimes they'll get pushback on digital content because there are patrons like, well, I like to work the crossword. How am I gonna work my crossword on the digital version? I'm going to show you how. So if you use this thumbnail sorter, you can scroll down, right, and see what page we're dealing with. So in this particular case, I can see there's a crossword here. I'm gonna click on that. And once I do, I'm gonna shrink this just a little bit. It's gonna be hard for y'all to read, but at least we'll get the full, full boat here. So you can see the crossword here. You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna select a clip. A blue box appears. Now, when I did this yesterday, the group I was working with gave me oohs and ahs. So I hope you're ooing and eyeing. So you just go like this. And then once you have your clip, you have some choices. You can print it out. So those people that want to work the crossword, you can print it for them. And then you can blow up that print a little bit bigger even, which is nice. It's not teeny tiny. You can download it as a PDF. Maybe you're going to use it for later for something. Or you can put it in your Google Drive. Maybe you want to save a bunch of crosswords from around the country. You can do that now. You want other crosswords from other places or even around the world if you've got access to world news. So that is how you can kind of show them, look, you can still use all of your favorite things from the paper. It's almost better because you don't get newsprint all over your fingers. So that is that. There's also, you can page by page. So if somebody wants to read page by page, they absolutely can. And then if somebody does know their section of the paper, they can scroll down this way. So that is image content. We are gonna go back out show our ribbon so we can go back out to our landing page and now we're going to throw it back to Catherine. Kim thank you so much oh my gosh I think there are oohs and ahs and giggles about goat yoga galore what fun thank you so much um, yes, let's pause here for questions. And again, just a quick reminder, you'll see some icons, looks like a little chat icon um, to the left of your screen. If you open that up and pop your questions in there, we'll do our best to get to all of them. We do have a few. Um, if there is a topic that perhaps I didn't see, uh, how do I let NewsBank know I want to add a topic? I think that we're talking about the suggested topics here. Yes, no, that is an excellent question. And it does happen. And there is a share feedback button up here at the top of your landing page. So that is a great place. If you're right in the resource and you're thinking of it right then and there, go ahead and share your feedback there and say, hey, I'd love to see this. Or, hey, I was in this topic and this particular subject under it was missing. Could you add it? Our product development team will read it. Of course, you can always reach out to myself or your other customer engagement rep, customer service, or your rep, but this is a great way to do it just quickly. Thank you. 
Um, we have a question about uh, languages. We saw um, the, the countries, but particularly finding articles that are written in other languages or French in particular. Oh, okay. So the quickest way to do this, it's going to seem crazy. So I know we all have the human nature. We want to fill this box with text. Just do an empty search. So empty search and hit the search button. I know this it, it pains me too. It's <laughs> Not, it's not intuitive, right, to leave something empty. But here we go. So once you get in, you're going to go down the side. Remember, we had all those limiters. There's one for language right here. And then you can see French content right here. So you could click that, and then that would give you all of your articles in French. That is awesome. What a great time saver. Yes. Um, in the interest of time, we are going to move on, but please continue to uh, enter your questions. And if we can't get to them all today, we will get back to you. So now that we know so much more about the fantastic resource and how to pinpoint that information, we would like to help you get it into the hands of more patrons. And so I'd like to share with you our top five strategies to build awareness and engage your community with your news bank resources. And you know, as a marketing professional, I always like to share ideas and learn from others. So I thought I'd share with you some strategies that we've seen other librarians use to get their news bank resources into the hands of more patrons. So I like to call it uh, learn from librarians. <laughs> Number one is get it in the news. Submit a press release to your community news outlets about the resources, or perhaps as you know, a featured resource of the month. An article is a great way to remind the community about the importance of having that credible, vetted, aggregated sources. So whether they're looking for something close to home or around the country or even around the world, that these are credible, vetted sources that they can find that information in and how, how they can access um, that information and then get multiple perspectives on the topics that, that they're interested in. Here we have three examples that were either written by and submitted by a library staff member or written by a local reporter in Hopkins County, Mentor Public Library, and in Burlington. Uh, my favorite is find news you can trust. So this is really an impactful way to connect with and remind the community um, that they have access to, to this news. And I'm also a big fan of reusing the content in your own library newsletter or a blog so you can you know use the information in, in more than one way if you download this presentation there's icons again you'll see that you can download this i have links to these articles so that you can use them as a guide for your own library number two build your online web presence so if you do a, again, featured resource of the month or a did you know section, add Access World News there. And we even have a graphics and brief descriptions for you to use. And again, here are, are several examples from customers around the world on how they have incorporated Access World News graphics um, onto their web pages and various places that they added them. Number three, video views. Video is, of course, right now the number one way to engage. And we have a robust selection of brief videos. Most are less than two minutes, ranging from how-to tutorials, product overviews, and more. Um, and they're available for you to download, or we encourage you to add links to your website near the resource or on your YouTube channel. Include it in your newsletters or social media sites as Kim mentioned um, like how to cite. We have a, uh, a how to cite mini video. Pick that up and you can put it on your social media page or in your next newsletter. Uh, you can see here how several libraries, Laurel County incorporated several videos, um, Washington State Library System. And also, oh, if you're a customer of, of Niche Academy, we are there too. So if you look up news bank in niche academy's marketplace you can really easily pop those videos into your academy too number four social media again we have i don't know if you know ready to use social media posts that we 
um, send out every month. We have posts and graphics that you can use. You can copy and paste them or you can make them your own. Um, it's a great way, again, like Kim mentioned, to get people into the resource. So, for example, in Centralia Regional Library, they used our post um, during Women's History Month that led to an article uh, with book reviews by, by women during that month. And then once people are in, they might start searching, searching around more. Um, Delaware County Library used, um, already used post, again, just to remind people about Access World News and that it exists, and to, just as a reminder. Uh, we have all sorts of fun ones, recipes, fun days of the month, uh, lesser known holidays. Here, Dorset Libraries used an example from uh, Shakespeare Week, and it was an article about some lesser known facts about uh, Shakespeare during that week. So that was fun. If you haven't signed up for social media posts, um, you download this presentation, there is a link that you can sign up for them and we will email them to you every month. And number five, host a hands-on training. Um, it can either be online or in the library as part of one of your, your library programs. Feel free to even use this presentation and uh, Kim's great search tips if, if you'd like, because we will be sending you a recording of today's session. And we encourage you to share it with others who may find it beneficial. So those are my top five engagement strategies. Um, you can find them all and even more in our Marketing and Resource Center. If you visit newsbank.com, we have all sorts of activities like our Summer Reading Resource Center. During the summertime, we have an annual um, resources for that. We have bookmarks. Again, those social media posts, you can download them there. So again, if you download this presentation, I know I'm plugging it a lot, but it's e it'll be easier to find uh, later if you have it all in one, one place. So I think I'll pause here again to see if we have any other questions. And we do. Kim, uh, um, a question, this is related to right, the Resource Center, um, printables. What can you tell us about printables? Oh, printables, that's a great question. We do get this a lot, particularly now that everybody's open. Um, I'm sharing my screen again. So if you want a printable, what you're going to do, whoops, I had to hit the share my screen button. You all have to forgive me. Here we go. Now, if you want a printable, so when you get your resource center link that will be included after the presentation, you'll go to whatever product it is you're looking for a printable for. In this case, we're gonna jump into Access World News. And you can see where everything kind of lives in here. Down, Toward the bottom where it says promote your news bank resource you'll see a tab for bookmarks tent cards and posters click on that first things first you're going to get bookmarks so these are fantastic you, you print them out sometimes we have some double-sided that we offer i've seen libraries take like an access world news and double side it with one of these themselves if you're great at pdfs you can do that um if you don't want it to be super brand specific or you want to feature more local news you can also still do local news, looking for trustworthy news. There's a Y News Bank. We've got news for you. This is about your local paper. So lots of bookmarks. The other thing that's in here, and I want to make a quick note for printables, um, and I thought it was a great idea. We have a library that uses, there's 11 by 17 posters and eight and a half by 11 posters. They use these little eight and a half by 11 posters and they put them in their periodicals and reading room. So that way, when a patron comes in, if they are you know, a regular at the library and they want to read, paper, magazines, whatever they've got in the collection. It serves as a nice reminder. They put this in a plastic frame in there and remind folks that when they go home or if they can't get into the library, that they have these digital resources that they can use from home, from the comfort of their home. So definitely use these printables to your advantage. Wonderful, thank you. And a question about um, uh, product descriptions. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Back to product description. So when we first clicked in, you'll see in, in every product that you click in, back on the resource center, when we clicked in, this is the first thing that you get. You'll get a graphic for that particular product and then three different descriptions. There's a long, a short, and a really short. What I want to point out is right here, you'll see like in the description, it says local title, including, and then it says insert local title if applicable. Definitely use that space. Don't just cut and paste this in with that written in there. 
take that, put your local title in, put that local title in bold face because what we've learned is those local titles give you a little bit of name recognition and that will draw the eye of patrons that recognize that title. Very good tip, thank you very much. Well, in the interest of time, um, we are going to move on. And I just wanted to let you know that today's presentation is one step in our commitment to partnering with you. If there's anything, um, we, if you think of questions later or if we weren't able to get to yours today, please reach out to us where we will follow up with you in the very near future. We hope you found today's session valuable and that you have some actionable ways to reach out to your community and get their hands, get News Bank into the hands of more and more of your patrons. As you leave today, you'll see a brief survey. We encourage you to please let us know what you thought about today's session, how we can improve in the future. On behalf of the News Bank team, thank you for spending part of your day with us. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye.